sometimes at night I have to download my brain so I can go to sleep. Mm. I have to, my brain is, you know, swirling. I got to get it all out on the paper. And sometimes I get so wrapped up in my emotions that I actually have to put them on paper to make sense of them. There's so many swirling around. And that's a beautiful thing because writing clarifies everything. That's right. it, it just brings beauty and order to everything. And that's that's one reason why I'm a writer. And, and you know, when I first started Laughs and Lyrics, <laughs> shout out to uh, the lyrics. <laughs> yeah. I um I had this thing that I would say I would say that what we're doing is not new. Sitting here talking and reciting poetry. This is what people did back in, you know, when we were still in caves, when we were we were really never in caves. When we were still in like villages, you know, um Edward. Around the fire, people told stories, people recited poetry, people danced and sang, and this was what bonded them. This was what put your heart in my heart. You know, I knew where you were coming from. I bonded with you. You know, and that's something that I feel I'm so glad we're getting back to because there's nothing like being in an audience with somebody pouring out their heart. Yeah. There's nothing else on the planet like that it changes you in a way that nothing else can it makes you remember what it is to be human yeah you know and i remember i was talking to a businessman and he was like why do you do what you do and i said because it reminds people of what it is to be human mm -hmm. it reminds people of what really matters they come in stressed and they leave refreshed. I like that. Because they remember what it is to be human. They remember what it's like to laugh and to sing and to dance and to hear the truth unvarnished, not politically correct. I yeah. mean, to hear somebody's truth and it, and it changes them. And I realized the power of that, you know, when I was sitting in audiences and I was like, this is one of the most powerful things on the planet. Yeah. That's what's happening right now. And I want to be part of bringing that to more people. And I want to be part of bringing diversity to more people. Because sometimes when you go to some shows, they're, it's all poetry or it's all music or it's all comedy. But I wanted to bring that diversity because I felt like each one of those voices had a powerful message. And so I wanted to combine it. You know, but... um. You will never find the most authentic in anything like poetry. Oh yeah, I, there's yeah. and and poetry goes hand in hand with jazz. Poetry goes hand in hand with comedy. That's why you see a lot of poor, a lot of spoken word artists can spit that comedy too to make. Mm -hmm. But they're speak like Dave Chappelle said. You know, I'm telling you the truth, but I'm hitting you with punchline. Yeah. Mm, yeah. You know, that's that's how I feel with with spoken word. I I love that the same way as I love to see. That person get up there and just pour their heart out, whether it be a a, a hurt, <laughs> maybe it be you know my baby. It was I got some last night, or maybe it can be about politics or injustice, something that but it's personally affecting them. You touch the masses when you do that. Yeah, you know what I mean. And uh, I'm gonna spit a piece real quick, but I wanted to get back to our theme for tonight because if you guys don't don't understand. This is all about are you busy or are you building? Because art is a legacy. We must have artists. We always need artists. That is legacy. That is what, again, keeps us feeling human. And let me talk about busyness. There's a, a song that I heard when I was probably 20. It was called Cats in the Cradle, and it's a 70s song. And um, it starts off... A man is busy. He's basically busy sing, doing sing everything. It, I, I, sing. I, I, sing I don't it. even have it memorized. But, but, but anyway, it was, it's something like, um, okay. The cat's in the cradle and the silver spoon. Little boy blue and the man in the moon. When you're coming home, son, I don't know when. But we'll when get together again. then. <laughs> I know we'll have a good time then. 
So I just the want story to starts off. I don't think they know you can sing. I just want to. Hear <laughs> the story starts off with a boy asking his dad to play with him. And the, 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 the dad says, you know, I'm too busy. I'm too busy. I'll do it later. I'm too busy. And then his son grows up. And the dad basically says, hey, when we're going to get together. And he goes, I'm too busy. I'm oh. too busy. You know, soon. But right now I'm too busy. And at the end of the song, the man says, you know, my son is just like me. My boy grew up just like me. And he realized that while he was busy, he missed building. Mm -hmm. He missed building a relationship with his son. He missed building a bond with his son. He missed building a legacy. So what I want to leave with you guys as we get ready to wrap up is that busyness is all about getting stuff done, but it's not about getting stuff done that leaves a legacy. You need to decide what your legacy is. What do you really want to leave behind? What do you want etched on your tombstone? Or better yet, what do you want etched in the hearts of the people that you know? Do you want them to say she was somebody who supported everybody or she was somebody who was always busy? He was somebody who was out doing good in the community taking his scars and showing them to people so that they could be inspired by his journey or he was always busy because that's really the choice that you have. We all have the same 24 hours, but some people have the right priorities and some people are just busy. And so when you decide what you want your legacy to be, that will make you determine some things you got to cut out because you don't have time for that because you don't have time for everything. You do have time for the things that mattered. And COVID taught us that. That's right, facts. You know, COVID taught us we can figure out what matters and we can make time for it. So what is your legacy going to be? Decide it. What are you building toward? Decide that. And then make your life line up. Make your priorities line up. You know, your kids, your family needs to be somewhere in that list of priorities. That's right. Your legacy needs to be somewhere in that list of priorities. Your talents and skills need to be somewhere in that list of priorities. There are certain things that need to be at the top, you know, spirituality, self-care. You know, you need to have some balance. And some of the busyness needs to be X'd because everything doesn't need to get done. That's true. Some things need to be undone, left undone. They are really not that important. But some things that you're leaving undone, need to be moved up the priority list. And I think it's time for people who have never sat down and said, what is my purpose in life? To sit down, especially during COVID. Sit down and figure out what the heck you're here for. If you haven't ever thought about that, if you don't have an answer to that, if somebody asks you, what are you here for? You're like, uh, uh, no. <laughs> you should be able to spit it out right like that. You know, maybe you can't spit it like we would spit it as poets, but, you know, you should be able to spit it. So I'm going to tell you my purpose in life, and I actually created this poem to start off every one of my shows because I wanted people to understand my purpose, okay? My purpose, energy is tied into my purpose. Energy isn't just something I do. It's connected to my purpose. Energy is not busy work. It's not because I have nothing to do with my time. It's connected to my purpose. You know, these shirts, this mug, this pillow, this tote, this is not busy work. This is connected to my purpose. Everything you see me do is connected to my purpose. It is not busyness. Everything you see me do is for a purpose. It is building. It is part of my legacy. So... My name is Zenashe, and I will now unfold the story behind that name and the lessons that it holds. 20 years ago, I worked my way through college ed. Waitressing, I paid the bills three jobs in all. I bled. A day arrived so full of strife, co-workers craved the pill that kept a smile upon my face when they all wanted to kill. What, what are you on that gives you rest? I need some of your zen, they stress. I smiled and just confessed, my faith is all I need. 
Fast forward 10 and once again, a day arrived with rage and in the midst of chaos, others marveled at my grace, hung around, embraced my calm, my total centeredness. Again, they intoned, Zen you be, but I did not see that in me until I embraced my destiny. I had to give in. It took me 20 years to see the purpose of my life, to calm and soothe and to inspire to dim effects of strife. Ashe came next, a word that means so be it, like amen. Yoruba in origin, it bonds me to lost kin, yet deeper still like Shayla written in the Psalms, it means be still and meditate on what you read, ponder long. Yet even more, it means my words exhale with force. They live, they breathe, they change the world. They alter my own course. A writer and a poet, this name states my destiny to exhale, living, breathing words that change humanity, that encourage people to consider truth and challenge them to grow. Because at the end of everything, self-knowledge must unfold. And so now you know my purpose and you understand my plan. You have just entered the state of Zen, never be the same again. Thank you. So to sum that up, my purpose and the purpose for Zenergy is to calm and soothe and to inspire, to challenge people to grow. That is what I do with my show, and that is what I do with Zenergy. That is what I do with everything. When you look at get Zen, stay Zen, spread Zen, this is supposed. This is a challenge. Get your head right, stay right in your heart, and then spread it out. This is Zenergy. This is me. This is my purpose. Everything that you see, when you look at this. Lit to transmit, a fire to inspire, a light to ignite, luminous. Same thing, different words, same message. I'm supposed to be a light. You're supposed to be a light. We're supposed to stay lit. Let's show people the way, inspire them, light them. All right, poetic justice, spit truth. I'm supposed to be here to tell you the truth. Poetically. Poetically thick, you know, poetically, but still the truth. Everything that you see, what is life about? Laughs and lyrics. It's about music. It's about poetry. It's about drama. It's about all the things that make life worthwhile, make us feel human. So everything you see on this table, part of my purpose. It's not just because it's cute. It's part of my purpose. So busy your building. Find your purpose. Walk in it. Everything you do. Everything you do, everything you do should line up with your purpose. If it's not, you're just busy. Mm. If it is, you're building. That's right. I don't like that. So how can people find you, Mr. Yolan? How can they find you? You can go to www.yolanyoung.com. That's Yolan Young, Y-O-L-A-N, young.com. Or you can find me on Facebook, Yolan Young, or my fan page, Yolanda Poets Poet, and Instagram, a Poets Poet. Again, that's www.yolanda.com. <laughs> awesome. And I am Zenashe, Z E N A S E. And as you see, I am passionate about people walking in their purpose. I am passionate about you finding what, what, what really makes you. Thank you. It makes you live and grow and feel joy and peace. And this is Yolan's book. So get one. We got Christmas coming up. Hey. Hey. Give some literature. You know? Give some, give some, give some, you know, shirts and mugs and other things. I got a whole store. You can, you know, look at my link tree. You know, www.laughsandlyricsmerch.com. All right. You know, you can go on there, you can get a shirt, mug, blankets, socks, totes, all kind of stuff, hoodies. So we got black businesses out here to support. Support black businesses during this Christmas season. You know, get stuff that's going to make you feel good, that's going to make you inspired, that's going to bring light to your life. And I want to thank you for joining us. 
So we're going to sign off. May you walk in Zenergy. Thank you, guys. Have a great night. My name is Zenai Shea, and I have a weekly podcast called Zenergy, which is fuel for the mind, body, and soul. And this is the Zenergize Your Life Goal Setting Package, Volume 1. It comes with a workbook, a journal, stickers, a bookmark, tabs, and a QR code where you can find my podcast. And inside this workbook, you're going to have 16 different principles. The first one, I'm going to show you mine, is abundance. You have a place to put pictures that inspire you of role models, also pictures of goals that you want to create, goals, journal prompts, meditations, affirmations, all kinds of things to help you focus on this principle to better your life. And like I said, there's 16 principles. So this is a $15 package that comes with all of these things I've shown you, $21 with shipping and handling, and you can get it at laughsandlyrics.com. So Zenergize Your Life with me. Thank you.